Abraham Lincoln is nothing short of a legend. He's a tall 6'4 legend to be exact. But how did Lincoln rise to such great heights? What was his life like as a boy long before Washington and the Civil War? What's the first chapter in the story of our greatest president? And how did these humble beginnings set him onto the path of greatness? Let's dive in. The year was 1782. Abraham Lincoln Sr., a former Revolutionary War captain, moved his family from a successful farm in Virginia to the edge of the frontier in Kentucky, a raw, lethal territory at the time. Even though Lincoln's newly acquired 5,000 acres, one of the richest parts of Kentucky, was dangerous. Wealthy landowners like the Lincolns were as exposed to outside threats as anyone at that time, and in 1786, while planting corn in the field, Abraham Lincoln the senior was killed in a swift Native American attack. As he was about to be scalped, Abraham's son Mordecai quickly grabbed a rifle from the shed and shot the Indian who was about to do the scalping. According to property law at the time, the entirety of Abe Sr.'s estate and assets went to Mordecai since he was the oldest son. Mordecai, now suddenly wealthy, left his younger brother Thomas penniless and homeless on the frontier he was not even 10 years old. With no choice but to work as a laborer, Thomas Lincoln spent most of his time grinding away on frontier farms and honing his skills as a carpenter. Manual labor was all he knew. Saving a little at a time, his hard work would eventually allow him to own his own land and raise a family with a talented seamstress named Nancy Hanks. They had their first child in 1807, Sarah. Five years later, they would have their youngest, Thomas Jr. Their middle child was born on February 12, 1809 in Hodgkins Creek in Hardin County, Kentucky. Abraham Lincoln, no middle name, just like his grandfather who died in the cornfield 23 years earlier, was born in a log cabin or perhaps even a a more primitive half-faced camp. By coincidence, Lincoln was born eight months and fewer than 100 miles away from his future adversary, Jefferson Davis. Unlike Davis, however, who would go on to live a higher class life among plantations, prestigious schools, and military theaters, Abraham Lincoln would work hard every day for very little and educate himself in a land with barely any schools. As a boy, Abraham Lincoln would quickly fall into the hard-working grind of the frontier that his father knew so well. One day, nine-year-old Lincoln hurried to the grist mill in order to grind corn into meal. Lincoln pushed the horse extra hard as he was in a rush to get back. The horse grew agitated and kicked him square in the forehead. Young Lincoln was unconscious overnight. Life on the frontier in the first part of the 1800s was difficult in many ways. Schools were scarce, and a family had to work for everything they needed, and sickness overtook many. In October 1818, Nancy Hanks Lincoln, Abraham's mother, died of milk sickness, a disease caused by consuming milk from cows who had fed on the poisonous snake root plant. Lincoln would always refer to her as his angel mother. It was a common law on the frontier at the time that fathers were permitted to loan out their sons for work and keep their pay until they turned 21. So as Abraham Lincoln grew up, his father Thomas would do just this, and young Lincoln grew to resent field work that his father had lived by. A wedge then formed between Lincoln and his father that would never go away. They seemed to be polar opposites. Thomas was illiterate while Abraham read every book he could get his hands on. Thomas was very religious while Abraham would never commit to any church. Even Abraham's height of 6'4 towered in contrast to his 5'8 father. But then, when his father remarried, Abraham's passion for learning in this rough and tough place would find some much needed encouragement. While he worked, while he walked, any chance he had, young Abraham Lincoln read every book he could. All subjects, any genre, this was his passion. In 1819, Thomas Lincoln married Sarah Bush Johnston, who had lost her husband three years earlier. 
Along with her three children, she would bring a new air of living standards to the Lincoln home, including new fancy furnishings. She even insisted on a wooden floor in the cabin. Unlike his illiterate father who scolded young Abe for reading instead of working, Sarah gifted him with books, which were hard to come by on the frontier. She passed on that memorable sense of humor to him as well, and she defended him and raised him as her own, and young Abe loved her for that. Despite saying he was embarrassed by the illiteracy of his parents later in life, Abraham Lincoln was deeply impacted by the love received from his new mother, a gift he would go on to reciprocate by buying a piece of land just for her to peacefully live out her latter days. As soon as Lincoln turned 21, he was able to venture out on his own. No longer forced to surrender his wages to his father, he took a job as a flat boatman. From there, he would go on to several occupations, from store proprietor to postmaster to lawyer to politician. Throughout this journey, from that log cabin in Hardin County, Kentucky, to Springfield, Illinois, to the battlefields of the Civil War, Abraham Lincoln's deeper principles remained constant. And like all of us, these values that defined him, that made him truly great, began to mold when he was just a kid. Okay, so final takeaways from researching and looking at Abraham Lincoln's childhood. I really learned a few things as far as doing things you don't want to do essentially does build character, or maybe it does. Uh, I remember when I was younger, either my father's or one of, one of my brothers told me, I think when I didn't want to do something, well, you know, doing something you don't want to do builds character. I think it was just a way for them to get me to do it. But Abraham Lincoln grew up in a place that was not designed for his passion, which was learning, reading, researching, knowledge-based bookworm stuff. He was born and raised on the frontier, which called for nothing but hard work. Everything you needed, you had to work for it in a place where that doesn't allow him to necessarily dive into what he wants to do he grew humility he he had every reason to have a chip on his shoulder but he didn't show it very humble and very mature you grow up fast on the frontier at a young age reading everywhere he could reading walking from place to place reading in between you know work you know plowing the fields he would read as he play you know every any chance he had he did what he actually wanted to do but at the same time he was working hard he was grinding away he was getting kicked in the head by a horse the same year he saw his own mother die when it rains it pours and he learned that early so to think later in his life when he's dealing with the biggest crisis the nation has ever faced in the most stressful job in the world, trying to keep a nation together while it's killing itself. The, that amount of stress, I think, he was able to handle it f because of that those roots that he had on the frontier where every day was a struggle, every day was a mini war, you know? Where's food gonna come from? You know, what? Uh, who's gonna get sick today? Humble beginnings, you gotta look back and think like, you know, if I had it rough, that's okay. I don't need to be cocky. I can be humble and use that to be better today. So I, I, I definitely learned that researching Lincoln's. And I just love that, you know, he literally was born in a, a log cabin. Absolutely. Um, a half face camp, possibly, which is not even a cabin. It's like three sides. You know, the stuff that you find along the Appalachian Trail that people are just getting wasted in, you know, like he was probably born in something like that, but our greatest president. Another thing was the difference that I learned that was the difference between Jefferson Davis and Abraham Lincoln when it really boils down to like who they were at their core because they started off as literally geographically as close as you can, I mean, 100 miles apart from each other, eight months apart. Okay, so you've got two babies in a similar part of the country 
at the same time. And you see their paths go like this. Jefferson Davis, of course, went south, you know, lived on plantations and, you know, that whole Confederacy, Southern military rebel, like that idea, like that, you know, he was, he was their president. Like he, he was molded into, into the perfect choice for that, for them, high class. And someone born very close to him went the other way, stayed on the dirt floor that he was born on, you know, until, you know, his, his, uh, stepmother came in and sort of changed, opened his eyes a little bit and, and encouraged him. But essentially what I'm saying is the idea that two people born so close in similar situations could venture so far apart. Jefferson Davis went to all the schools that if you looked on paper, who would be, who has the best mind between the two? Who's smarter? Who's, you know, academically superior on paper? You got to go with Jefferson Davis. I mean, they didn't have any law schools back then. Not even a law degree because there was no, the way you are able to become a lawyer was to work with lawyers. And then eventually, you know, you become a lawyer, but no schooling you know he taught himself mathematics when he was a kid and he and he read when his parents couldn't so he did it himself this was in his being you know this is that's that's extraordinary that's why lincoln is extraordinary because you look at the values and they can only come from within himself so it's really cool to look back at historical figures childhood early days when they failed, when they were growing up, when they were learning their lessons, and really see their values form that early. Um, and it, and it, this is why history is so great, is because looking back, not just history, but at ourselves, I know what real struggle is, and I got here. How did I do that? And how can I do it this time? So history really can teach us how to make a better future for ourselves, for others, all of that. So thanks Lincoln.